I'm Shamel Lane for twopeasinabucket.com and I'm here with a special video for National or International Scrapbooking Day and um, or perhaps weekend since this is going to go live on Sunday. Now what I've done today is I've assembled a kit of supplies that are all available here at Two Peas and I'm going to start and show you my honest process from um, this kit to as much as I can get completed. And I haven't pre-planned anything other than choosing the supplies. So um, it may go terribly wrong. I'm really, really hoping it won't, but um, I'd love for you to follow along and see if there's anything that inspires you. So first of all, I'll go through all the different bits and pieces that I've put into my kit. So I've got, um, just because the embellishments are all on top, I'll start with that. I have this new inky black color from the Mr. Huey's Color Mist Collection by Studio Calico. And this set of clear stamps, um, which is a joint project between Hero Arts and Studio Calico which has all sorts of different travel motifs, but also some that could just be used for all sorts of different things. The word stamps, the Polaroid, and the map are um, not quite as specific as the airplanes and things like that. A set of black jewel candy dots from Pebbles. A die cut um, from my mind's eye. This is called the Howdy Doody Happy Title. There you go. It's in the Miss Caroline collection. It has lots of different words and wood grain. This also comes in a different set of words and colors and fonts um, for something that's a bit more masculine in, um, in another range within the same collection, if that makes sense. Some small letter stickers from Studio Calico. These are red with a really subtle map print in the background, but once you separate the letters, you can't really tell that it's a map, so it's not, um, not a worry if it's not the right theme. These thickers, which are a joint project between Studio Calico and um, American Crafts, I do believe, yeah. And these are um, the Lullaby font, in a chipboard this time. They used to be, the lullaby used to be in foam. This is a chipboard with a grid pattern on top. Some border stickers from Crepe Paper in the Storyteller collection. Most of these are the 12 inch borders, but then there are a few 6 and 8 inch sizes on there too. A smaller set of label stickers from My Mind's Eye that's in the Miss Caroline collection. And then the papers. There are 10 pattern papers. This floral called At First Sight from Dear Lizzie Neapolitan. This one from Hip Hip Hooray by Pebbles. It's called Good Times, and I'm going to use this pink um, grid side, I think. But the A side is this kind of brighter, scallopy print. This one called Cheerful Notes from Dear Lizzie Neapolitan that can be cut into all sorts of pieces, of course. Or there's a full sheet on the other side. A pink dot from Lily Bee Design, and they do this pattern in all sorts of different collections. So you get a tone on tone polka dot on one side, and then a slightly distressed solid on the other. This one from Follow My Heart, or Follow Your Heart by um, My Mind's Eye, which has a little bicycle or the honeycombs, and that's called Be the Best, that paper. A map print from Crate Paper. In black and white on one side and the other side is cork and that's called archives. This one called Tiny Chevron from the Classic Calico Collection 2 which also has a circle pattern on the other side. One from Basic Gray's PB&J collection called Hip Fab which has a navy and cream chevron and then a solid navy on the other side. This is also from Crate Storyteller. This is called Tomorrow and has red on both sides in slightly different patterns. This one is also Crate Paper, but it's from Pretty Party and it's called Cake Stand. It has a wood grain on one side and pink and strawberries on the other side. And then I've pulled out some cardstock to go in my kit, but I may not use all of this cardstock. Sometimes I decide I'm in a bit of a cardstock mood and other times I just use pattern paper. So I have two sheets of craft, one of a dark gray, a vanilla like a cream color, and a white dotted Swiss. Okay, so that's everything I've put together in my kit. And this comes to about $40 if you were to buy everything that I've just pulled out here. 
And but if forty dollars seems like a lot, keep in mind that the stamp set is fourteen ninety five. So you could take essentially you could take fifteen bucks right off the top if you decided you would rather use something other than the stamps and you just wanted all the paper and embellishments and the Mr. Huey. So you still get quite a lot. So um, yeah, and these are all quite new products. So everything here is um, is at the full price in the store. So this isn't even some sort of special deal. You're still getting quite a lot, and I'm going to make a lot of layouts from this amount. So I'm going to grab some photos so I can get started, and I will take you through this process, and we'll see what happens. I've decided I'm going to use this um, pink grid as the first background, and I want to start with some ink um, splatters on top of this. So I'm just going to do that first so that it can dry while I'm getting everything else ready. So just give that a little shake. It doesn't take too much. And then I'm just going to start dropping the black um, Mr. Huey all over this one corner here. And I want quite a lot up here. I don't really know where I'm going with this. It's just, uh, just the first thing that came to mind. So I'm going to have a big cluster of ink there. And then I'm just going to put a little bit down here. Not nearly as much by comparison. balances. Yeah. And then I'll let that dry while I'm getting everything else ready. With that pink grid that I've put the mist on, I think I'm going to go with these three papers, but I may change my mind along the way. I'm not going to use this on this layout. I'm going to save the bicycle for another page, but I'm going to use um, some of this grid up in the corner. And then I'll just have that other section for later. And then I think some of the elements from this sheet, which I'll cut up, and then a little bit of this floral too. So I'm going to start with two 4x6 photos and this grid. And normally when I use two 4x6 photos, I really like them to be stuck together, like straight. But I think these two pictures, I just think the energy is a little bit better if they're angled. So I'm just going to cut one piece that will be square and then I'm going to layer the photos on top rather than attach them first and then do the mat just because it's a little easier. So I'm just going to mark where I want the paper to be trimmed. Okay, so I have the pictures ready to go on that grid paper and then I've just cut a few other pieces a few from that sheet of all the different boxes and then some of that floral. And I'm just going to figure out where to place things and when I do big splatters like this inevitably there are some blotches that I like better than others and I'm not really keen on this one so I automatically am going to go to that corner so that I can tuck um, something or I can tuck that dot underneath and, and it won't show. So just going to add adhesive here and the trick to what I want to do is I'm not adding a big row of adhesive all the way around the outside because I want to be able to tuck things in. So my adhesive is always in the middle. If you prefer everything to be really really flat and not to be able to layer once you've put something down then by all means run the adhesive all the way around the edge but that's why I tend not to because I like to be able to move things around and tuck the other elements underneath. So, for example, I want to be able to, well, I think that one's going to go on top, but I'm definitely going to be putting some of this underneath, and I'm just going to cut it into smaller pieces so that it will fit, smaller still, so that I can get a bit more from this paper. And I want this one to be straight, I think, so I'm just going to use that grid on the background paper to line it up. So I want about this much. Just start layering the other pieces on top. Mm -hmm. Where this one's going to go. That'll work. So 
So this is what I would consider the basic um, structure of the layout. I still want to add my writing and my title and a little bit further embellishment. Okay, a few minutes later, and I think this is where I'll call this done, I will go back to all of the layouts at the end um, when I have the whole stack to see if there's anything else left in the supplies that I want to add. But just to talk you through what I added, um, I added one of the border stickers up here at the top to start my journaling, and then added the writing in there. These three circle embellishments are the stamp that looks like a little map from this set, and I just stamped it on the back of this... Um, the floral paper, the back, is a cream watercolor type paper. So I stamped a few of those and um, cut them out. You could either cut them out with scissors or a punch or a die, whatever is easiest. And then just add a little bit of ink to the edges and put those on the diagonal following the ink blots. Um, to finish the those off, I added three little um, black gems, the Candy Dots by Pebbles, and I took one of the smaller border stickers and added it in here, then the title, and the rest of the journaling. So everything flows on this um, diagonal, but then there's also a horizontal line that comes across the photos to um, add further embellishment. And just one little thing I wanted to mention on this one before I go on to my next page is about title placement. Now obviously if there was something really important in the bottom of the photo it wouldn't be a great place to put my lettering. But in this case the lettering works well over the photos because I'm not covering up something important. I don't want to put um, the letters over someone's face or anything like that. However, if this part of the photo was something that I couldn't cover up, I'd just place it ever so slightly off the photo and keep it close to the pictures. Next page, I'm going to start with these three papers, the red, the blue chevron, and a wood grain. And for this page, I'm going to use one of my favorite um, page starters, which is a square design. So this time I'm starting with a pattern paper in the background, that's the wood grain, and then I cut a 10 inch square of the blue and white chevron, and then a, a mat to go around that in the red. Now in this case I wanted to make sure I would be able to use more of that red paper later, so I cut this box out from um, that mat that's underneath. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, it really just depends on whether I can see that I want to use that paper again. I do like really thick layouts, so sometimes I'll use the whole sheet under underneath there. It just depends on the page. So this time I've cut it out so that I can use it again later. And then I've added a navy blue box across the bottom that goes almost to the um, edge of the paper. That's just the background of, or the back of the, the blue chevron. So um, that navy was already handy when I cut um, the 10 by 10 box. So that's where I'm going to start. And then I have two photos that I'm going to use for this. This is another two four by six photos, but this time I'm going to do something that I very rarely do because it's really not my favorite way to work, but I'm going to use one portrait and one landscape just to show that I can do it because these this is an honest case where these are the two photos I have, they are the two pictures I took that day, and one is portrait and one is landscape, and um, I think one on its own is going to look a little too lonely, so I'm going to go try and, and use both. So um, I'm going to place them like this, but this shows you kind of why I don't I don't tend to like it. Um, I end up with this awkward gap here, and the two put together is the same width as my 10 inch box, which doesn't give me a nice layer. It gives me things that line up in an awkward sort of way, like things are too much, um, too the same. So I'm going to um, shift that up a little bit. I'm going to use this red and use the other side and cut a mat for one of the photos and then I have a little bit of um, different size that I can treat them because I can treat this one like it's a little bit bigger than 4 by 6 and hopefully make that work. With the title in place I've added a few border stickers and just put this photo on ever so slightly an angle to change up the squareness of everything here. And I punched a few little um, circles from a little bit of vintage ledger paper that's part of this paper. It's just a tiny little square of it. So I couldn't get three full circles, but I could get one full circle and two partials. So um, I just punched them off the edge. And then I end up with this kind of awkward empty space up here, which would be fine for writing, except this isn't really a very good pattern to write on. So I needed to go with something a bit more neutral. And I had um, some of the grid paper just sitting on the trimmer left from the 
from the first layout I did because this is that same grid that I used behind the photos on the first page and I added the rest of that border sticker here there's a little bit of it here too so that's the full um, 12 inch border sticker and then the other partial circle and then I can tuck that behind the two photographs and balance this angle so this one's going this way I want this one to go the opposite way but when I use angles they're really ever so slight it it only takes a few degrees from something to go from just ever so slightly off center to something that's just so skew if that it's hard for the eye to see it so they're really really slight angles I tend to think of them as the sort of angles you get if you get a, a stack of papers all together on your desk and they're almost perfectly lined up but you haven't done that pick it up and and settle it all down yet so they're just ever so slightly off um, the center but they're not way off so that's kind of my um, my way to judge whether it's angled too much or, or if it's okay and and um, on the last page I mentioned about putting the title over the photo and in this case these photos weren't a good candidate to put the title on top of the photo unless I put it in the sky and that didn't give me enough uh, room so I've run the title at the bottom but this is what I meant um, in that if I do place the title then below the photo instead of on top of the photo I try to get it very very close to the picture so that there's not a gap in the middle if I put these letter stickers below that navy blue um, the navy blue box then there's just this awkward gap of the navy blue across the middle and it's really hard um, for your eye to take everything in so in my opinion I like everything a little bit more crunched together and overlapping so that's just where I would place the title and um, I I'm already now out of A's on that set of letter stickers, so this was a little bit of a dangerous choice, knowing that I only have um, the thickers and the little red letters to get me through the rest of the layout. So we'll see how it goes. But at this point, I'm ready to do my writing, and I think something needs to go on top of these three little circles. I'm thinking maybe something in the red, since um, there's no red going on on this piece here, and it might be nice to, to just create that little visual triangle with that punch. But the other optional... Um, option I might go with is to not do red and maybe look, have a look in the supplies that I have here and see if I can find something that would contrast like a yellow maybe perhaps and um, and put that on all three with something where it would be the only place that it's on the layout is just in those three places and then it surrounds the photos and the writing so everything important is right there in the middle. Okay, I didn't have anything that was a bright enough yellow in the supplies that I'd picked, so I did have to go back with the red, and I just used a butterfly punch. I really kind of wanted a star punch for this, but I didn't have one um, on hand, so I always have a butterfly, so I went with that. I added um, a date sticker from the uh, set of labels down at the bottom and filled in all my writing on the grid paper here at the top and this is nearly done I'm thinking this needs some stitching or something like that so I'm going to um, put it in the finished pile for the moment but then I may add a little bit to it when I come back through for one last pass through this set of layouts but um, at this point I'm definitely ready to move on to the next page and I'm going I want to use um, the leftovers from this because I have a separate single photo that I think would work well um, on the facing page of my album so I'm going to see if I can make them not as a completely double page layout but as two coordinating singles that will end up um, side by side in the album. Um, I decided I would at first I was going to cover everything else up but Actually, I'm, I'm going to try it just as it is, like this. Um, and then I'll end up with the butterflies inked, but also the, um, the rectangle as well. So if it goes wrong, I'll just cover it up. So we'll give it a go. One more. Okay. I'll pick this up. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, I think I'll set it aside to dry and then um, figure out where to go from there. 
my dries, I figured I would go ahead and go on to another page. And I'm going to start with this map paper in the background. This is the cork on the other side, which I'm not very keen on. So I'm going to use that full map um, 12 by 12. And then I have this photo booth strip. And these two little pieces, oh, three little pieces, yeah, from um, the Cut Apart Dear Lizzie sheet. And then I might use some of this that kind of coordinates with this block here and um, figure out where I want to go with that. So um, for this, I know that I'm going to, um, to use the pink lined block for my writing. And I'm just finding my black ink. Um, I think black is a little bit of a better match for this one than brown. I've been using brown on all the others so far. Just ink these to start, and then I can figure out what I want to do with the larger piece of paper. And I think this one will probably have some black ink splatters from the mist as well. I think this is where I'm going to leave this one, but I will come back to it at the very end. I um, added a few little, I have a few more little strips, including a border sticker, and stamped the um, the insects Polaroidy type. Uh, frame from the set onto the grid paper um, because I wanted to um, to use a, a duplicate word for the title which is um, her name um, and it's also a line of a song that I get stuck in my head all the time so um, nothing particularly deep and meaningful there uh, but I knew that if I spelt it out with the thickers twice one it would mean that I was out of some popular letters and and limit how many more titles I could get from that set of thickers but also more importantly um, the spacing just wouldn't work very well because you've got both ascenders letters that go up and descenders letters that go down and so if I um, if I had to space them out enough that I could fit everything in, I'd end up with some really awkward gaps in the middle. So, um, and the letter, the red letter stickers didn't go particularly well because I tended to pull out more of the pink than the red in that pattern paper. So I just wrote it um, by hand and then added the thickers. Finished the journaling on the pink uh, striped paper and added a few of the little gems, just one to either side of the picture, um, to bring that all together. And I might add some stitching to that, but for the time being, that one is done. Next on my list is one with the pink polka dot paper, and I have a slightly strange photo that it's not a very good photo, it's quite an old photo, um, but there's a story that I've been wanting to get in my albums that goes with this picture, so I don't mind that it's not a very good picture. It's the only picture I have of that day, so I'm going to go ahead and run with that. Um, I'm going to use the gray cardstock and the pink uh, polka dot. I'm just going to cut a little bit off of this so that mostly it's going to be a full background of the pink polka dot, but I'm going to have the gray um, as a frame around the edge and then I've pulled out some bits and pieces uh, these three are from that Dear Lizzie cut apart sheet so um, a dictionary paper a journaling box and this jar and the caption I'm not sure if I'll keep those together or separate them and then I've got that my mind's eye die cut with the little wood grain at this side so that's where I'm starting with that um, I'm gonna go ahead and start by cutting the pattern paper and then layering things with this one I know that the focus of the layout is going to be on the writing so I need to figure out a way to include everything that I want to write and then um, that will lead the design of the embellishment with my single slightly awkward photo, I ended up filling the journaling card and I got all but one word that I wanted on there. So I just used that as kind of a feature word and put it at the end. And then a few tiny little details down the side. And just added the embellishment over um, to the side of this cluster. I put both the journaling card and the photo on some cream cardstock and uh, added this little grouping. I actually split this die cut a little bit, so um, just cut between the two words so that I could stretch it out and put that little um, tab over the top. And I didn't end up including the little jar that was next to this. Um, 
this piece. So these were attached and I, I just used the word piece and haven't used the jar yet. Um, this isn't looking completely finished to me. I um, added the little gems which helped a bit and I don't think that I'm going to put a big title on this. I like the, the smaller words as they are and it means that you kind of have to read it for it to make sense in the album which is what I wanted. But I do think that this will need a little bit more something. Maybe just some punch shapes or something. So I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to come back at the end and see what little sprinkling I could add maybe something a little bit here and here would just really pull it together for me. Coming back to this layout with the craft and I sprayed that black ink and I was just waiting for it to dry. I um, took the rest of those little scraps and just kind of cut them into strips and stacked them up and left that little bit that was sprayed where I'd used the, um, the mask for the butterflies but just cut this piece off and, and let that little piece um, stay there with that bit of inking and then I used the um, border sticker from this sheet and cut it into two pieces and added the title here at the top so that this kind of becomes a title embellishment area and then I have all the pattern paper down here and that's where I'm going to put the photograph as well. I think I'll just yeah layer it on top of everything there. And then what I was realizing is that there's that empty space at the bottom of the picture and the butterflies don't completely make sense on their own if they're just sat there on their own. So I thought I could add another one down here in the corner um, to bring those two far corners of the design together and to bring the black um, into the red and blue just kind of tie it all together. Now I didn't have black cardstock in my kit um, that I would put together so I just punched it from some cream cardstock that I had out from the layout before and then um, rubbed it over the top of the black ink pad or I could spray it with the mist as well. So um, just making do to to make it work without getting any more supplies out. Then I'm going to add um, my journaling here um, in a black pen and a few more letter stickers down here in the bottom corner, or in, in this area of the page. Here's this one all finished, and I know I said earlier about wanting to keep my title very close to my photos, and then in this case I did completely the opposite and I put it um, on the far corner from the photo. But um, I think what I really mean is that if the photo is, if the title is going to be near the picture, then to me it needs to be very, very close. And then if it's going to be far away, it needs to be far enough away that that's obvious. I really wouldn't like this page if the title were here, for example, because it would just end up floating in the middle. So um, to me, I like it. I like the the title on on either extreme, either very close to the photo or very far away, but not really floating. Um, you know, a few inches away. Uh, I'll probably break that rule again later. But anyway, I'm trying to, to figure out what I mean about that. And the journaling goes right in the middle, and I quite like how um, it looks at first really difficult to read, but with um, when you look at it in person, the black of the pen and the black of the mist are two different shades, so actually it's quite simple to read um, if, if the layout's in front of you. And so that is mostly just from those tiny little scraps and then quite a few letter stickers. So that will go opposite the other page in red and navy in my album. This one, moving on to yet another page, this one started to give me trouble because this particular piece of paper, the um, the bicycle and kite print on the grid. Now I've used quite a bit of that grid paper on the others but I'd saved the little bicycle part and I was going to use that with two 4x6 photos and it just didn't matter what I did with them on the page I couldn't get this box to reconcile with the two 4x6. So in the end I decided to play around with the paper, put the photos away and just not think about using those two those particular pictures and um, play around with the paper to get something that I liked and then I could see what sort of size photo would work with that and um, just ended up going with a very different photo than what I had originally planned so that's okay um, the other photos can go back in the drawer and a better paper or a better design for them will come along so um, I cut just a box around that corner of the design rather than trying to cut 
every little element of this out with scissors because this one would be really, really difficult to cut apart. Um, attach the bottom with a, a matte print border sticker from that same sheet, and this ruler is also from the border sticker sheet. A scrap of the red was still left from that the two layouts that I've used the red paper on, and then this um, little phrase bit was from the cut apart Dear Lizzie sheet. So still everything from the kit, haven't added anything. And all, of all the photo sizes I tried, um, this uh, wide instant, which is a Instax uh, 200 series from the Fuji uh, instant cameras, um, this works really well. And in fact, all of the sizes of instant cameras that I had, or instant photos I had, worked. So either the, the narrow one or the old fashioned Polaroid, Polaroid print. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this layout with this. And most of the layout, it, all the elements on this page are going to be in this bottom corner. Um, so I'll add the title, the journaling, and um, a little bit more embellishment to get this finished. And here's this one all finished. Um, the title, that stamp, uh, the word stamp from the same stamp set I've been using. Um, and then I just did a pen line all the way around the bottom, around the, the whole 12 by 12 and added a few gems up here. Nothing big up here, not a, a big group of papers, just a little bit. Um, and took one of the label stickers and put it on pop dots. So I'm going to call that finished and this might be one that I add some stitching to, but we'll see how I go. I think I'm on layout 7 at this point and with this one I'm using the the Studio Calico chevron in the background. I have this uh, piece left from the Dear Lizzie cut apart sheet and then I'm going to put that with one uh, 4x6 photo. I want to place these on the page but not attach them yet because I'm going to do some misting in the background and I just want to see where the um, where the pictures will go because I want to place these. Now these, I've just cut some circles from um, some scraps of pattern paper that were sat here and the paper itself won't end up on the layout. I'm just going to use it as a mask. I'm trying to decide where I want those three things to go. I think I'll go with that. Okay. So take these off now, and these aren't adhered, they're just placed, and then I'll take the Mr. Huey and I'm just going to spray right over the top of each one and miss terribly. Well, that first one was a bit of a fail, the other two a bit better. And so I end up with this circle in the negative. Then I'm going to put the photos over the top and then I can add a little bit of embellishment in there and then hopefully everything there will um, come together and hopefully I'll be able to add enough here that the uh, off-centered spraying isn't such a bad thing. So with everything put together on this one, I just punched um, some little circles that were smaller than the ones that I use for the mask using the same punch that I used on an earlier layout. Um, and this is from that same sheet as the balloon card here. Um, and then use a little heart punch and the black gems uh, to add something on top of that. Uh, played with some ideas for using the and symbol because it's a wedding photo. So use their initials and then their names um, and the big and in the thickers. Their last name starts with E, so um, this A to G uh, letter, sticker, border kind of thing uh, worked well, and then I could uh, add in the, the letter stickers to spell out their name. Uh, another option I thought of was maybe using a stamp to encircle the E, bring more attention to the E, um, but I didn't have anything in the stamp sheet that I had pulled out that would be a particularly good match for that. So I think I'm going to leave this one here and I'm going to try to eke out one more because um, I really like the idea of getting eight layouts from the set. So I'm going to see if I can put all the scraps onto a sheet of white cardstock and come up with something to finish it off. What I have left in terms of paper, I have two little elements, oh maybe three, from the cut apart sheet but one has some pieces cut out. still have quite a bit of this pattern. Um, some of it cut with the circles where I tried different things. Uh, the back is cream, but also does have this strip um, in a multicolored stripe that would work. 
I've got this with the two-tone red, a little bit more of that. I've got a green polka dot strip from the branding bit, some navy, just a tiny little bit of that, a little bit of that grid, where it has this honeycomb on the back, but I'm more fond of the grid, I think. And two pink strips. So not a lot, but definitely enough to pull together. And then I also have quite a lot left on the border sticker sheet. So I'm going to go with this idea of borders. And I haven't pulled any photos for this. I'm just going to give it a try of putting all of this together on one layout. And we'll see what happens. So with all these strips cut apart and the border stickers added in and then one of the little uh, rectangles left, this is what I ended up with. Um, I do have a few little leftovers that I haven't included. I've got a few more strips of this. I couldn't find a way to get the jar in and I've got the grid paper, but the grid paper I could definitely use for journaling. Um, and if the jar doesn't come in useful for a page in the next couple days I would probably stick it on a card because it's it's a lovely motif um, but it's just it hasn't been working with the style that I've been working in so I've got a tiny little bit left over um, but then I basically just glued all these down uh, and this is what it, it ended up with um, and then I went looking for a photo and <laughs> because this is kind of a page of leftovers I've I think I'm okay with with doing this. I'm just gonna use a tiny photo, which I know is is a little bit um, controversial, perhaps. But here's the thing: this photo was on the top of a stack, um, and I had printed it at this size for a project ages and ages ago. It didn't end up working at this size, and I had to reprint it um, for a mini book, I think it was. Um, and so I've just had this one in the in the drawer. And every time I see it, I think I should either do something with that or I should throw it away because it's a digital image, so I have plenty. I, I still have a backup of it. Um, but there's something I, I just kind of like the idea of having this tiny little photo in contrast to all the, the bits of paper. So I think I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to attach it here. I'm going to add a little bit of journaling here and I think a title on this box here. And I'm going to call it done. Here's the finished result um, with the writing and the title and um, had a, another label sticker I could add in with the photo and I decided I would go ahead and use one of the stamps that I hadn't used from the set even though this one kind of bothers me because it has the word favorite but it's the American spelling and I tend not to use the American spelling of things but I like the phrase and, and it, I've done eight layouts, so maybe I'm a little delirious. I'll see if I still like the uh, the spelling of it tomorrow. And if I don't, I can uh, come back in and add something here to change it around. Um, so that is the eighth layout. So I'm going to um, just flip through the eight pages that I made. So I started with the pink, and there's quite a lot going on in this case, the first one. And there are the two that are going to go side by side in my album. So this one is the more minimal with just the iPhone photo. And this one with two photos at 4 by 6 The map page with the photo booth strip. oddball photo where I wanted to write lots just a little bit of embellishment here this one where I wanted to use this uh, the the design in the corner of the pattern paper but I had to rethink what I would do with the photos because my original plan didn't work this one with the masking and the the spraying and then a few little bits in added to finish it. And this one with all the leftovers. To let them sit overnight. And then tomorrow morning I will look at them and, and figure out what little tweaks I want to add. 
Now, you may have noticed that they're not quite as uh, layered up as some of the pages I would normally make when I wasn't limiting myself to just what was in the kit. But I want to stay true to that challenge, so I'm not going to add any other supplies, but I will allow myself some needle and thread or the sewing machine and thread. So I think I'll go back and add um, some stitching here and there to finish things off, but I'm going to try to steer clear as much as I can of um, adding anything else. I'm going to try not to add brads or buttons or anything um, that wasn't in my original kit so that you can truly see um, just how far that $40, uh, $40 of supplies, including the $15 stamp set, um, can really go. So eight, eight layouts. Um, all with things that I really wanted to get scrapped, all with writing, and uh, you'll be able to see all of those eight finished pages, including the stitching and everything else, on the two peas in a bucket uh, page for this. So just follow the link if you're watching on YouTube, follow the link underneath, and you'll be able to see it all there. Okay, so that was um, my completely delirious scrapbooking on a national or international scrapbooking day. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you've had a really productive and creative weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.